dances once again by the gate instead of in the parking lot. Everyone except for Andrew looks tense, like they were before. Andrew picks up the Rubik's Cube. Your color comes up. You go. Just so you know, Andrew, you're creating six different timelines. It's called the Chaos Theory. Of course, Derek. Of course. Eliza hits play. Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond starts playing. Andrew throws the Rubik's Cube, and it lands on white. White? That's... Kim? Everyone stares in concern at Kim, who looks completely baffled. I, I don't really know what I expected. What, you, you know what was unexpected? The earwax incident. Why did I know that was going to happen to me? I can't seem to ever have any luck. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Kim, it's all in your head. No one has inherently more luck than anyone else. No, Maddie, you don't understand. Anything that can go wrong will happen to me. I'm the group's punching bag. It's really unhealthy to be thinking like that. We're all equal here. We don't have any less worth than anyone else here. We care about you, Kim. Honestly. When we first met, you were nothing but bright and intelligent. You're my best friend, Kim. Never forget that. Sometimes I have to create barriers because I'm intimidated by how resourceful you are. If it means that much to you, let's switch colors. I'll be the one who gets suspended. For once, Kim smiles at all the love she's been getting. Neil Diamond begins singing everyone's favorite lyric. Sweet Caroline. Stop. Kim stops and gives Derek the death glare. The guard walks on the bus as Kim heads towards him, accepting her fate. The guard nods as he handcuffs her and takes her away. We all mature, Derek. Way to make her feel like trash. If anything, you should be thanking me. You were seconds away from losing your precious Maddie forever. He stands up, but immediately falls on his own untied shoelaces. I'm going to be honest with you, Andrew. I don't think you should blame Derek for Kim leaving. You're the one who constantly makes fun of her and tells her to shut up. He does have a point, you know. The way you treat Kim isn't alright in any sense of the word. Ooh, hate to hear it from your crush, right, Andrew? <laughs> Stop taunting him, Derek. I already know about his crush on me. I'm not interested, Andrew. Sorry. What gave it away? Maybe it's the fact that Maddie can never do anything wrong in your eyes. Your inherent bias hurts others too, you know? How so? Typical. You're too infatuated by the perfect, flawless, magnificent Maddie that you can't see the obvious when it's right under your nose. Eliza sadly gets up and goes to the back seat. Andrew goes to Eliza, and as he leaves, Derek hands Connor some candy. Here, Connor, for our friendship. Thanks, Derek. I really needed this. This is seriously stressing me out, you know? Stressed out? Do you guys not realize the stakes here? We are completely fine with sacrificing a member of our group, our friend group. We were supposed to fight this all together, but instead we turned on Kim. Didn't you agree to do this to begin with? Well, yeah. But I was just being a follower to Andrew. I'm always trying to impress him, you know? But my cool demeanor, I just want to be like who he is. Sometimes I just feel out of place. Connor, if anything, you're the person who fits in the most. We wouldn't be here without you. Right, Derek? Uh huh? Oh, yeah. Hey, Derek. Well, it's just the three of us. I just want to say that thanks for helping me out, class. We had a lot of fun. I think it's time I start being independent. Kind of like you. You inspire me, man. Just don't tell Andrew, or he'll get jealous. Derek is completely taken aback. He's seldom reminded of his true worth in the group. Hey, Connor, don't eat those candies, man. They're expired. It says they expire on September 14, 2022. They're fine. Please don't, Connor. Please, dude. Please. If you want the candy back, that's fine. But I want at least one. Give it back. No, Derek. 
I demand to be gifted with your candies! Why are we all yelling? Derek wrestles Connor for the bag. Connor quickly grabs a handful and shoves them all in his mouth. Suddenly, his face changes color as he spits them all out, panting like a dog. His tongue seems to have been scarred by the severe soreness. Maddie gasps as Derek looks incredibly guilty. Hey. Why is it? What's wrong? I'm fine. Go away. Usually people who say I'm fine are close to tears. You never understand. Leave me alone. Understand what? I understand you. I like you. You meant the world to me. We always talk about how no one cares about you, but I did. I was always there to check on you whenever you were feeling down. How come you never noticed? I don't know, Eliza. I know why. You're too distracted by that Maddie. Love makes you blind and irrational. You distance yourself from those that care. Maddie this, Maddie that. That's all you ever talk about. How did that make you feel? I don't need you acting like a therapist to console me. I'm not acting like a therapist, Eliza. I'm just acting like your friend. Keyword being acting. It's not real. It's all just one big fantasy. The only one who ever understood was Kim and you drove her away. Having a crush on you for as long as I did ruined my life. Your life? Liza, we're in high school. Let's just go back and pretend today never happened. But we can't. Stuff like this sticks, you know? I'm tired of you for not really realizing how much I cared about you. It doesn't mean we can't go back, Eliza. Cared. Past tense. If you still think I like you after all of this, then you're completely delusional. Enjoy chasing after a girl who isn't interested in you for the rest of your life, Andrew. I don't care if you don't like me anymore. I just want to help. I don't need your help. I'll get over it. High school couples aren't meant to last, and those that do end up unhappy and broken. I was only in your friend group for two reasons. My friendship with Kim and my crush for you. Now that there's no benefit for me staying, I'm gone. Goodbye. Eliza storms off. Eric! Why? A candy is so sour and torturous that it's used as a war crime. Warheads! This was all just a cruel prank. Connor, 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 listen. I... I don't want to hear it from you. I don't want to hear your excuses. Just answer me this. Just answer me this. Why are you like this? Why do you find joy in tormenting us? Um, senioritis? Senioritis is an excuse made by broken individuals to justify their terrible actions as being a part of the stress of their daily lives. Also, we're freshmen. What's your real reason? Exactly. You're sick, lonely, twisted person, and I hope you spend the rest of your high school alone and friendless. Pork chops. You want some, Maddie? No, I'm I'm vegetarian. It's all right, Maddie. You, Eliza, and Andrew changed dietary phases so often that I made special vegan pork chops. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like cooking is the only thing I contribute. Wait, hold up. Maddie, didn't you all make a secret agreement to not eat Connor's food? Derek, how did you know? You weren't there. Once one person knows a secret, we all... No need to beat a dead horse, Derek. It's good though! Yum! So stupid, Maddie. You didn't even take a bite. All this time, I've been lied to by my so-called friends. Um, fine, I lied. But it smells good, though. It would have hurt a lot less if you just told the truth. I can take criticism. I really can. I would have completely understood if you all didn't like my cooking. But you know what? You know what crosses the line? What crosses the line is that you all decided to lie straight to my face. It really hurts, Maddie. Really, really hurts, yeah. Maddie looks down in shame, knowing full well that the jig is up. Connor snatches the pork chop from her and puts it back into the oven. He then unplugs the machine and storms off, leaving only Maddie and Derek. The two sit in silence, realizing the friend group of six has been completely disbanded within a few short minutes. I wonder what happened in all those other timelines.